Hello, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back. And this is part four now of the um, Ford Mustang GT500 1967 build from Diagostini. And if you haven't seen the other parts, go back and have a look. Parts one, two and three are on the channel. There was a bit of a break from November to January. There was a bit of a, a hiccup with their production, but um, they seem to be back on, on schedule now. So it seems like every sort of five weeks, every month, we're getting a delivery. Um, so in this delivery, I've had packs 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13 and free gift. We've got the uh, the binder for the magazines to sit in. So this is going to be really handy. So we'll get this open. It's going to be really handy to keep the magazines in because uh, I've been keeping them in the box with all my bits. You need to get yourself a box for all the bits and pieces because there's a lot of sub-assemblies. Well, at the moment, it's all sub-assemblies. So you need to get yourself a box to keep your bits and pieces in. So there's books one to eight there. So they can sit nicely in here. And there we go. Perfect fit. And that's our, our magazines there in our binder. We've got the front of the Mustang there. And they've got the back of the Mustang there. So that's a really nice, high quality little binder there for our magazines to stow in. So uh, as I say, today we're going to be looking at assembling parts 9, 10 and 11. We'll have a look at the magazines as well. There's some um, interesting bits and pieces in there for us to look at. So part 9 is another tyre. Remember we did, the, we did this in part 2, was it pack 2? Um, I should stop saying part, shouldn't I? It's pack. It's pack 9. The video is part 4. Um, so this is pack 9, tire with the inserts, and then um, pack 10 is the wheel to go in said tire. So we'll have two fully built walls and tires. And then pack 11, we've got the actual window and the quarter light to go into our door. So um, we've got some screws in there as well, and there's another little piece of black plastic there for something weather. So uh, that's all going to be very nice. We've also got that strip there as a protective strip to stop the glazing getting scratched on the window when it winds up and down because yes as you can see on there there's teeth down there and yes the window actually winds up and down so that'll be interesting and we're going to be doing that in parts in packs 12 and 13 so uh, look forward to that that'll probably be with you next week or maybe in a few days we shall see so without further ado let's get to our uh, camera above the bench and we'll get these uh, we'll get these put together We've got the magazine, so uh, all usual information on there, all from Diagostini and telling us where we can get in touch with and everything. So in here we're looking at the uh, the Mustang in NASCAR. So 2011 Carl Edwards was the first driver to win a race in the NASCAR Nationwide Series at the wheel of a Mustang. And i got to be honest, that is about as much Mustang as I am a princess. Um, <laughs> it's, um, it's got the front grille, well it's not even a grille, it's stickers to look like the headlights and grille of a 2010 Mustang. But um, unfortunately, it's not. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a body that every car was pretty much the same. And it's the same today. Today, they have um, carbon fibre bodies, but they're all built on the same space frame. The only real difference is the design of the front end and the actual engine itself. Because today, you've got um, Chevrolet, Toyota and Ford with the Mustang in, the, in NASCAR. And they all, they're basically all the same space frame. The bodies are pretty much identical from the sort of front wheel arch back um, you'll see in the different shapes of the rear windows and the way they make them but the actual front end is different on them all so they look like a, um, a Toyota Camry, a um, Chevy Camaro or a Ford Mustang so there we go. So we've got over the page here uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway Mustang driver Rick Stenhouse celebrates his first win in 2012 so there we go and they've got some more lovely images there of the uh, of the Mustangs racing each other. Um, 2019, a Mustang debuted in the NASCAR top flight. Until then, the Mustang had limited itself to Xfinity series. But um, they're actually racing today and they do really, really well. So there's the, um, we're going to assemble the tyre. So there we go. We remember that's going to be a, it's going to get my fingers going on that one. So now we're looking at the Mustang Cobra Mark II. Um, success in the midst of the crisis. Yeah, that was, I think, the least popular Mustang ever. Um, I think they called it the Pinto Mustang, didn't they? But um, yeah, it was the Cobra II. Uh, it, you can see the spoilers and the stripes and all this, that and the other. And it was basically dressing up a, a dog, really. Um, 
not a very good car at all, I don't think, in my opinion. You can see there also quite, um, yeah. The Mustang Monroe Handler was a special version made by the shock absorber manufacturer Monroe to present a new range of their products. I mean, would you look at that? Oh, dear, dear, dear. This was a bad time for American cars. You can see there's the Cobra. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are these the Cobras and that, they're very rare and they have a lot of special interest. But when you compare them to the Mustangs that came before them and the Mustangs that have come after, they really were the uh, the black sheep, really. Um, the way they were going, I mean, there was going to be, I think it was a front-wheel drive Mustang and that became the Cougar, was it, I think? But uh, yeah, and then the V8 is back. 1975 restrictions on gasoline supply were removed and Ford decided to offer a V8 Mustang again. So you had a 4.9 litre producing 140 horsepower. 4.9 litres, 140 horsepower. Yep, great. And not to 60 of 10.5 seconds. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> there we go, there's, there's some more pictures of them there. You can see, I, I call it the Ford Pinto Mustang. I think you can understand why. And here's some coupes here. The, the, in this model, the coupe does actually look quite nice. And the gear versions there with the nice wheels and the white striped tires and the, the vinyl roof and everything. It, it does look quite nice in its own little way. But I thought it was quite nice. But anyway, so that's the um, that's the magazine. So let's get the light on and start to do some building. So we have that nine here. So what we can do is get this cut open. We'll just cut the top off like that. There we go. Job done. We can get our tire out. We've got our inserts here. We've done all this before. I think it was pack two, wasn't it? We did a tire. I think pack one was the bumper, wasn't it? So it's telling us to check all our parts first. This tire feels slightly softer, I think. But, uh, same on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which way around it goes. Um, there's no directional mark on there or anything. Of course, 67, they wouldn't have had that. So basically, insert one of the internal parts of the tire. 9B in the tire 9 inside the tire 9A. Fit the inner part into one side of the tire by inserting it fully in place. Then insert the other inner part of the tire into the free other free half of the tire. Check that it is fitted in place correctly. So this is part 9B. So that's just going to slot into there, like so. And this, these are quite tough to get in, especially the second one. But um, they do suggest, I think, putting in hot water. They haven't suggested that here. Um, but I wouldn't recommend putting it in hot water because the hot water is going to you're going to get water sat in there and it's going to rust the screws or the wheel or whatever. Um, if you really do need to heat it up, perhaps get a, a hair dryer on it or something. But um, right here we have to squeeze this in. If you're a youngster building this or a young lady, you know, not so much strength in your figures because this really is brutal getting this in here. Um, perhaps ask an adult to do it. There we go. That's gone in. There we are. And as you can see, it's quite a struggle to get it in, but uh, we got there in the end. So now it's asking us to put these pieces in and what these do, these go in and wedge these two halves apart. So that's just going to sit in there like that. And it's just going to clip in like so, just like that. And you can hear it clip in. You need that solid click because you want it to be flush. You don't want it sticking out. So we're going to push that in. I have to say that's not good enough. See how it sit there? And it's raised that's not good enough you want it to click in properly like that all right so that's uh, that's that's that done and that is it okay so that's pack nine right next up pack ten we can put this away in our binder now there we go so pack ten So, magazine in pack 10, we've got a lovely picture there at the back of the model, looking really nice. It kind of looks like a CAD image, if I'm honest, because that doesn't look real there. Um, so, basically, here we have the 1969 Boss 302, and it's in grabber orange, and that is my favourite Mustang of all time. Absolutely awesome. Um, absolutely awesome. There we go. Larry Shinoda above designed the Mustang Boss 302 and 429, which were produced to capitalize on the Mustang's success in the first two Trans-American Sedan Championships of 66 and 67. You can see one there, the 429, um, 
what a car. And the 302, if you've got a five litre Mustang today, if you work it out, it's actually a 302, which is cool. So we've got the, uh, we're going to build up a wheel now. We're going to put that in the tire. So that's going to be part of pack 10. And then here, Ford Capri, the European Mustang. That's what I've always said. Everyone thinks of the Mustang being as like this, you know, really special class American muscle car. It's just a Ford Capri. And that's the Mark 1 Capri there. Um, with twin headlights. So it's probably a three litre. Uh, does it say? It's probably a three litre with the twin headlights. I can't remember now. But it's got the beautiful Ross style wheels. And uh, I've had a couple of these and boy do I wish I had one now. So absolutely gorgeous car. Uh, and there's the Capri Mark II, which I never really liked very much. I've got to be honest. The, the Mark II, I, mean, I much prefer the looks of the Mark I. Um, with East Kane, you could have like a 1.3 Kent engine. You could have a 1.6 uh, and then you could have the 3 litre V6. And then later on, they put the Pinto in them. So, uh, yeah, really, really nice. And then they had the the 2.3 and the 2.8 um, V6 Cologne engine in them. This was the um, Mercury Capri, but it's just, it's a Mustang. It's basically a Mustang, but it was called the Mercury Capri in America. You can see RS on the side. Very, very nice looking car. Beautiful. I love these, these Mustangs. And you can see there's a Capri there showing all the bits and pieces in the back. And then there's a, is that a Tickford? And that's a Zach Speed. There's a, um, you can see it's a, it's got a turbo and uh, it's got the aluminium wheels, but you see very like 13 inch by the look of it. That was the Capri turbo in the early eighties, Renault imposed, imposed turbo technology in Formula One, Porsche won at Le Mans with turbocharged models and the Audi Mark dominated rallies with its turbo powered Quattro. So it's not surprising. Turbo technology came into vogue in the best way for the sportier versions of certain models to gain power. Ford was no stranger to that. It likewise adopted the turbo for its Capri in Germany between 81 and 82. Ford built 200 units of the Ford Capri 2.8 turbo with 190 horsepower. Wow, eh? A 2.8 turbo, 190 horsepower. I've got a 1.6 three-cylinder GR Yaris outside and it's got nearly 300 horsepower. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it, how things have moved on? But, uh, yeah, I, I did say Tickford. In the UK, the Tickford company also built a Capri Turbo for Ford based on the German engine. This time the car had a complete body kit with a closed front wheel, rear disc brakes, modified suspension and a luxurious interior. I bet it was luxurious too. And then here's one sliding in the snow. And then we've got a 2.8 there. That was the big injection badge on the side. And uh, these are the ones that I remember a lot of, the, um, the, the, the two-tone blue and silver. But, uh, very, very popular car in its day. So let's go back to the instructions. There we go. This is going to be a front wheel. We'll get the light on and we'll get our parts for pack 10. So once again, we'll get our knife and we'll cut the, cut the top off and we'll get the parts out. We've got a metal wheel there. We've got a metal inner rim, bag of screws. And here we've got the center cap. And we've also got the, the nuts and bolts. Again, we've done this in a previous uh, previous build. I think, it, I think it was pack two, wasn't it? So we've got the Volv stem there. And then here we've got some screws. So get those out on the bench as well. We'll have an extra one in there, I expect. So we get all these bits out of the way. So there's our center cap, which has got a magnet on it. We're not going to fit that in yet. But what I do is put a piece of masking tape around there and just put it in there so it don't get lost. Got our wheel bolts there and there's our tire valve so the first thing it's telling us to do is put the tire valve in now i must be honest i am not supposed to break the build sequence but what i found on the when i did the first one with this is once you press it in what they tell you to do is use a tool or something to push it in okay it's quite easy to knock it back out there we go okay so what i'm going to do here is get a drop of super glue. So I'm just going to grab a drop of super glue here. What have we got here? This one, this, just use this one for it's called for PE, but it's fine. This is the VMS super glue. So I'm going to put a drop of that super glue on my Pringles lid. And then I'm going to push that valve back out. In fact, what I'll do is I will push it in halfway. And I will grab a little cocktail stick, 
I'm here cocktail stick and I'm going to put some super glue on here because the trouble is with this once you fit it to the tire if you push the valve out you've got to take the whole wheel apart to get it back in so I would advise gluing it in All right then just for safety what we can do is put a drop around there and that will capillary down in okay so that's that done and we'll just get a cotton bud just wipe away the excess just like so there we are so that one's glued in there right so now it wants us to actually fit this these are our wheel nuts so that part there is going to slide into there he says It's like it doesn't want to go. I wonder why. It's because there's that great big lug on there. <laughs> so there we go. You've got a lug there and a slot in the part. So I missed that. Stupid me. And then they're telling you to put this wheel into the tyre. But I'm going to do something else first. We have these screws here which are a 2.3, M2.3 screw. So what I'm going to do is actually tap these threads out. So I've got I've got an M2.2 tap here. I don't have a 2.3. So what I'm going to do is just tap these threads out. What you see a lot of people do, they, they dip the screw in a drop of oil. And then they allow the screw to cut the thread in the metal. What I'm doing here is actually cutting a thread, which is a far more professional way of doing things. And it also means you're not just grunting the screw in there and having the screw cut its own thread. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just, I've done that one there. And now you can see that in there, you may be able to see we have a thread rather than just a great big, rather than just a hole. Great big, what we're talking about, great big. So as you can see, I can come along now with this, um, with this screw. And that will go in there relatively easily. Okay, so... Uh, so there we are right it's going to make life a lot easier because these these wheels are not that easy to put together they're not really difficult but they're not easy so on here we have two lugs as you can see there one there one there okay see those one there one there and they have actually got to sit in these slots down in there just above my feet you can see there's a little slot in the plastic so that that slot, that lug has got to sit in that slot. Okay, you'll feel it when it engages. Okay, so that's gone in like that. And you can see from this side, that the lugs are in. Okay. And then here we've got the same again. We've got the two lugs on there, one there, one there. And they're going to go in. And you can see that I'm going to line that one up there with that hole there. But that's not correct because the screw holes don't align. So we're going to go around 180 degrees and align that lug with that one there. And then our screw holes will align. And as you can see, it's quite tight to get it all together. So what we're going to do is grab a screw, put it in the hole. Oh, come on. do with a better screwdriver really please go in that hole oh dear let's put it on the screwdriver properly okay so grab a screw put it in the hole just turn it in a couple of turns and then we'll go we can't go dead opposite because there's five screws so you've got to go in a kind of try and go in a diagonal pattern if you can just screw that in a couple. You can see how easy those screws go in with that thread cut in there. Makes life a lot easier. Just want to check I haven't pushed that valve back in. Okay. And then over to here. That 
put in there and then we'll grab this screw and put that one in there okay so now I'm going to look at it and see that it's all pretty even and it is so what I'm going to do now is go a few turns at a time or just like about a full turn at a time and try and sort of pull it down evenly now I really would suggest getting another screwdriver for this rather than using the one that comes with the kit because it's really not you know you need to be pushing really hard and also be very very careful when you're pushing the screwdriver in if this slips it could go through here and stab yourself in the finger so be very careful so we can actually go around and keep missing one and you will end up then doing it diagonally that's something i hadn't thought of before if you keep going around miss one go a bit miss one go a bit miss one You'll all, because there's five of them, you'll always be attacking the, the right screw. As you can see, this is not easy, any stretch of the imagination. But these wheels need to be good and strong because they're going to be supporting quite a way. I could not believe I picked up the box today that I've got my bits and pieces in. I cannot believe already all we've got in there is a front bumper, a door, a wheel, the inner manifold and the seat. And it weighs a ton already. You can see there how that's pulling together. Just like so. Get those screws to pull down nice and tight well it's not nice and tight you just want them to stop really there we are and that my friends is that that is our mustang wheel together so there we go the valve's still there now this cap Obviously when it goes on it's going to have a magnet holding it in, so all I do, I just get a little piece of Tamiya masking tape and I'm just going to wrap it around, I'm not sure how much I need. This might be too much. There we go, that's enough. Now I'm just going to put a bit more on there so that it doesn't fall out. But a bit more masking tape. If you don't have any of this Tamiya masking tape, you could use any old tape. But it's just so that you don't lose it. There we go, that's gone in there. And I want to push out, I just push out from behind. But there's our wheel with our center cap in place. As I say, they tell you to put the center cap to one side, but I'd rather have it in there than have it rattling around in a jar or something and getting scratched. So there we go, that is our wheel all together. You can just go around if you want to and just Give one more little, um, I've got a bigger screwdriver here, I don't think that's going to be any good, no it's not. Um, here's a different screwdriver. Yeah, that's a posi drive screwdriver and these are clearly Phillips screws. So I'm really stuck with using this one. But, uh, just give them a quick once over just to check they're all in. There we go. And that's our wheel done. So that's another one. So we've now got two wheels. So you can see how big this car is going to be. They weigh a ton. It's going to be a big old model, this one. It's going to be lovely. Right, so we've got two wheels. And we've got a seat. And we've got a door and a front bumper and everything. We've also got a little Tamiya paint jar here. With all our spare screws in it. So we can drop that one in there. So we've got all our spare screws in there, you can see. Well, that's good so that's it guys that's it for a pack pack 10 um 
Now let's have a look at pack 11. All right, so here we are, final one for this video, pack 11. And uh, you see a lovely view there of the inside of the model. So opening the book up, we've got the Challenge of Le Mans again. Um, I think we've looked at this before, haven't we, Le Mans? Uh, we can see the car which Carroll Shelby won the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1959 was an Aston Martin. Only five examples of this highly competitive car were built with the aim of winning both the Le Mans race and the World Sports Car Championship. And there we can see Carroll Shelby having won. Then we've got the, uh, this is the pack 11. We're going to be building up our windows into our door and everything. So we'll look at that in a minute. And then we've got the Ford Cosworth DFE. This engine was very, very popular in Formula One. It's like pretty much every car. I don't think, I don't think Renault used it. I don't think Ferrari used it. But I think pretty much everybody else did. And it was an absolutely amazing thing. Cosworth DFE. There it is there. Beautiful engine. If you're into your models and you've built Tamiya 112 Formula One cars, you'll know all about those. So uh, very, very nice there. We've got uh, Colin Chapman and Keith Duckworth, um, Lotus owner, looked over a Cosworth DFE Formula 1 engine. Absolutely awesome thing. Very, very nice. And there's a um, Emerson Fittipaldi, 1974, in a Cosworth, uh, Cosworth powered um, McLaren. That's the word I was looking for. All I kept seeing was Marlborough. I suppose they're allowed to put that in there. Um, and then here we've got a uh, Lotus 49 was the first car to use a Ford Cosworth engine and the first to be proclaimed world champion with it in 1968, driven by the great Graham Hill. He was a wonderful guy. And here we've got a list of all the different people that have won races with the Cosworth engine. And there you can see a Ferrari and, um, and a Williams. Is that Williams? I'm guessing it is Williams. Um, and then here we've got the, uh, the famous Cosworth Sierra, which is worth about a million pounds now. Um, very nice car, very nice car indeed. So that's our Pack 11 magazine. So let's have a look at what we're going to be doing in here. This is looking uh, quite technical. So it'll be a bit more interesting than just putting wheels together, won't it? So it's also covered in static. I can feel this pulling the hairs on my arms. So we've got a little bag of screws there. We've got a plastic tray. We'll get the light on for you. Here we go. We've got a plastic tray with bits and pieces. We've got this window, which is incredibly clear. In fact, I'm saying it's incredibly clear. We've got another piece on top of here. So that's what I'm looking at. So that window must be absolutely amazingly clear. There's our strip. Can get rid of that can go for recycling. That's a lovely, um, like a felt strip. That's going to go on the edge of the door and stop the window getting scratched. We've got our window there. And that is Beautifully clear. Wow. Really, really nice. Must be so careful not to scratch that. That is gorgeous, isn't it? That is really nice. The person that made that mold tool uh, earned his money that day polishing that. Blimey. me. Then we've got a little bag of screws here, so we'll cut these open and get them out on the bench. Okay, so. So part one of the magazine is check all our parts. So obviously we've got our left quarter window. 11C is an internal window guide. 11D is the strip. We've got the DSO2 screws. We've got the window itself and we've got the quarter light. So it's telling us to first of all get the door ready. So I've got my, here's our interior door panel which we've done which is very nice indeed with the handle on there. And then we've got the door here which is wrapped in a in a cloth and I'm going to keep it on the cloth so it doesn't get scratched because as you can see on here the paintwork is gorgeous. So um, basically uh, what we're going to do is fit that strip along the edge here. Now I'm just looking here, I want to look closely at this where you actually start the strip. You start the strip here behind that crown. Um, so what we're going to do is get this strip Check the length. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Right. So we're going to put the strip on. Now it looks like the strip they've got is thinner than the strip they've supplied. So we're going to make sure the top edge doesn't go over that. And the other thing I'm going to do, I am just going to grab a piece of paper towel. I'm sorry I wasn't better prepared for this. I'm just going to grab a piece of paper towel, fold it into squares like I always do. And then I'm going to grab a drop of IPA, isopropyl alcohol. 
and I'm just going to just gently wipe along the edge of here because we may have had greasy fingers or something on it and we're going to make sure we get a nice grease free there was something on the light you can see it's the dirty on the cloth so we'll have a nice grease free um grease free grease free panel to put our sticker on so what we're going to do here is peel back i have no nails as we all know because i bite them which i could stop and we're going to peel back this backing on here Okay, very sticky. So we're going to peel back that backing. We're going to position this strip on here. But we don't want the, the top edge to be sticking over the top. Okay, so we can stick that on there. And then what we can do is pull that back some more. Stick it down. Pull that back some more. Stick it down. And then just without stretching it, come along to the end and stick that down. And you can see we don't have it sticking over the top edge at all. And what's that what that's gonna do, that is going to protect our window as we as we fold the window up and down, we roll the window up and down, it's going to protect from being scratched. So that's pretty good. I may need to trim some off the end there, but we uh, will leave that until later in, in the day. Okay, so that's that done. Right, we'll get rid of that bit of paper. Now, um, next stick the rest of the glass protection strip 11D to the edge of the door, peeling off the paper as you go, make sure the strip is on straight, leaving no gaps along the metal edge of the door. Okay, so basically make sure there's no metal exposed because otherwise you're gonna scratch your glazing. Take the left quarter window 11A and get ready to add it to the door. Two holes in the base of the quarter window will be, posi will be positioned over matching screw holes in the short posts in the door, as shown in the picture, these posts here. Note that the quarter window has a dummy opening mechanism, see circular inset photo. This means that it looks like the original, but it is not functional. Now place the quarter window in position with the two holes in its base over the screw hole posts on the door. I've already gone in and put um, and tapped the threads in here for these screws. So um, I just wanted to check that the 2.2 tap will actually work. And I'm going to get this out with a pair of tweezers and I'm only going to touch it on the bottom edge so that we don't scratch it on the top. Okay, so you can see we've got this mechanism here. We've got a handle on the inside. That's all very nice. It's all very big, isn't it? They've got the rubber around there. That's all very nice. So that is going to drop down onto there, like so. Check the outside looks good, and it does. Okay, and then we're going to grab two of our screws. So there's one there. That's just going to go into our tapped hole. As you can see, it goes in really easily. I really would recommend getting yourself a set of taps because otherwise what you're doing is you're, you're forcing the screws into the metal work and you can never really feel when the screw is bottomed out okay and there we go um, I just actually gave those screws another little quick tweak just to make sure they're in make sure that when you put the window in it's sat above the edge of the door like that you don't want it to be down behind it will actually try and pull down you want it sat on the top again make sure that strip isn't getting pulled about either when you're holding the door and stuff so that's that right so now we're going to turn the page in the book and finally fix the window in position with the two screws uh, this is what the left door looks like once the quarter window is in place keep the left window and the internal window guide safe as they will be used in the next assembly so we've got these two bits here okay and they're going to be kept safe and what we'll do is we'll put this lid back on to make sure none of that gets scratched and we can keep all that together until we do pack 12. so we've got the spare screw there that can go into our tamiya jar 
just like so and then whoops the bank straight back out again and then we can put the um and then we can wrap this door up again in our cloth so it doesn't get scratched put it away in its box and uh, I'll see you soon for um for pack 12 so that's been part four uh, part five will be with you in the next few days I'll see you then thank you for watching bye for now